powerful empires, greed brought on by wealth, mysteries under the surface of the sea. The story of the Virgin Islands is a long one, but worth staying along for the ride, because where we're going, royals, slaves, governments, citizens, and everything in between collide in a tale that's sure to leave you impressed. The following words can only be described as part of one epic place, Virgin Islands National Park. The Virgin Islands are a truly isolated place. Located 50 miles east of Puerto Rico and 1,100 miles southeast of Miami, Florida, the islands are split into two halves, one half controlled by the U.S., the other by the British. Visitors attempting to get to the island of St. John, where the national park is located, must take a plane to the neighboring island of St. Thomas, drive across St. Thomas, and then take a ferry to finally reach the Cruise Bay Visitor Center. Sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? But those who have the time and money will find their patience rewarded, as many humans have over the centuries. The Virgin Islands were first reached 3,000 years ago from South America, as the Caribbean was being explored and inhabited during an exploration age for South American cultures. The island began to be settled shortly after, with most beaches on the islands becoming places for huts and other facilities to be constructed. One of the best sites to see the remnants of what came to be called the Taino Civilization can be found in Cinnamon Bay, on the north side of St. John Island. Of course, in the late 15th century, across the Atlantic Ocean from the Virgin Islands, one man was coming up with an idea. He wanted riches to get wealthy fast, and he had a plan to find them. That man was Christopher Columbus. In 1493, on his second voyage to the New World, Columbus claimed to have discovered the islands, naming them after St. Ursula and her 11,000 virgins, in Spanish called Las Virginis, or the virgins for their beauty. After Columbus left, the islands were void of Europeans for a while until around the latter half of the 1500s, when a most peculiar group sprung up in these Caribbean Isles, pirates. Sent by European nations to fight over Spain's holdings in the area, and after all Columbus had claimed them for Spain when he arrived, pirates often engaged in fearsome sea fights to claim a victory for their side. After much battling, it would be the Danish who would establish a settlement on St. Thomas Island in the 1670s, and would follow that up by starting settlements on St. John Island in the early 1700s, and creating hundreds of sugar plantations run by slaves brought over from Africa. The slaves were treated brutally, and even uprose once and controlled the island for several months in 1733 before the rebellion was put down by French troops from a neighboring island. Another rebellion in 1848 led to freedom for all slaves on the Virgin Islands and set the islands on the path they still are on today. As we mentioned earlier, half of the Virgin Islands are under British control and have been so since the 17th century. Denmark, however, managed to retain their half of the islands all the way up through 1917 when the United States purchased the land for $25 million. As this was during the height of the First World War, the islands did not see a huge increase in Americans until the 1920s, and from there, the islands only continued to grow. In the 1950s, a man by the name of Lawrence Rockefeller decided that a 5,000-acre piece of his property on St. John Island could serve as a historical and natural recreation area for the public. He donated this land to the National Park Service, and in 1956, Virgin Islands National Park was established, bringing our historical tale full circle. But what is there to do with the park today? For starters, some of the best experiences at Virgin Islands lie not on the islands themselves, but in the surrounding waters. Visitors can go snorkeling or scuba diving at some of the numerous coral reefs offshore of St. John Island, and will find many different species of fish, like triggerfish, filefish, and lionfish. Nurse sharks and southern stingrays are also common sights among the reefs, which contain coral that is alive as well. For those who prefer to remain on land, several short hikes travel across the island to secluded coves and mangrove forests, which shelter the only native mammal to the island, bats. However, non-native mammals like donkeys, goats, and mongooses can also be found around the island. Whatever you choose to do at this exquisite park, make sure to be respectful of local guidelines and you'll have a great trip. America's national parks are a diverse group of places, with each location providing a different experience than the last. Virgin Islands National Park, the only national park deeper than the confines of the region known as the Caribbean, offers a unique taste to the history and culture of a storied past, and a present that encourages visitors to always be ready for adventure. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep thinking warm thoughts. You just may find yourself drifting off to a secluded Caribbean beach.